One of the tools that has already made it from the laboratory to the marketplace is our automated reading of facial expressions. So using computer vision, we can not only identify where your eyes and eyebrows and mouth are, uh, but are you nodding your head? Are you smiling? Is it a smirk or is it a genuine smile of delight? A lot of that uh, facial analytics now has been improved by putting it on the web where people can opt in, turn on their camera if they wish to show their uh, nonverbal voice, show their facial expressions. And there we collect just hundreds of thousands of examples, and actually now millions, uh, that allow the computer to get very accurate at recognizing these expressions. We are now uh, validated in Brazil, China, India, the US, the UK, a number of different countries. Uh, we're in over 35 countries recognizing facial expressions 24 seven. The way this works is people are, uh, choose to turn on their camera when they're watching either an advertisement or a movie trailer or a short video, maybe an online educational lesson. And while they're watching it, the camera watches them. You can see if you're engaging them. You can see if you're interesting them. You can see exactly where you lose the interest. You can see if you're making a video where your jokes succeed and where your jokes fall flat. And I, I know a lot of people um, we've been working with are, are so excited. They're, they're finally able to say things to their boss like, you know, here's how the customers really responded, right? And if it's bad news, it's no longer, you know, me the messenger bringing bad news. It's just the data. Right? So it allows you to objectively separate the um, personal opinions about the content from how everybody that it was designed for uh, is responding. Another kind of data that we've collected a lot of, in fact I'm wearing some prototype sensors for new versions now, is physiological data related to the autonomic nervous system. So this system uh, tends to go up when and be activated when you're in a state of anticipatory excitement or um, in a state of engagement. You're really listening intently, uh, positive or negative, it can go up. If you are an educator, if you're trying to get the attention of your audience, then you want to see this signal uh, go up periodically. You may not want it to max out all the time. You want to give it breaks, but you don't want people to be just low in the signal through the talk. Uh, I've personally observed the signal all day long at MIT during a variety of activities. And you'll see it go up when the students are in the lab. And you'll see it go up when the students are interacting socially. And unfortunately, the low point of just about every day is classroom activity, where it goes pretty flat. Uh, unless you have a professor who really cracks jokes and engages and does back and forth interaction. And then you can see it pick up again. So online, uh, we can now measure, or actually in regular real world life and stores and shopping experiences and social interaction and marriages and uh, therapy sessions with kids getting occupational therapy, all kinds of different real world scenarios now, we can get that data and allow people to see outwardly and objectively something that previously was hidden and you weren't really sure uh, which way it was going.